Hi everyone, welcome to A Day in the Life Off. Today we have marketing uh, as a department, so we have a couple of head of departments here. So we have Andrea from Bright AI, we have Jack from Assess First, and we have Alicia from Immune Diagnostic. So uh, my name is Mafalda, I'm the head of business development and customer success here at Wonderway, and I'm super excited to speak with my guests today. Uh, so I'll let them introduce themselves. So Andrea, why you don't go first? <laughs> so, hey everyone, um, I'm Andrea Mandel. As my father said, I'm the head of marketing at Brighter AI. Uh, for the last decade, I've been um, doing B2B marketing for different startups and scale-ups uh, in Berlin. And yeah, Brighter is no different. It's a privacy tech uh, startup based in, in Berlin. Great. Jack, would you like to go second? <laughs> Um, sure. um, so I'm Jack. Uh, I am the marketing manager for UK International at Assess First. Um, and uh, yeah, so Assess First is uh, basically in the behavioral science um, and predictive recruitment space. Um, and yeah, although looking after the marketing, I've got a background in sales management as well. So kind of went from, um, from the bright side to the dark side in marketing. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Alicia. Okay, well, my name's Alicia Revelo. Um, I'm head of marketing here at Immune Diagnostic AG um, here in Bensheim, Germany, next to Frankfurt. I'm obviously not German by my accent. Um, and um, we are a company that we work on developing and manufacturing in vitro diagnostic devices. So very biotech focused. Very, very nice. Three different industries. That's 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 great to hear. So yeah, let's crack on. Um, so Jack, how is how is your role in the natural? Let's start very general. <laughs> um, well, it's marketing in a nutshell. Um, but uh, it's very broad. So I'm by by trade, I suppose I'm a marketing generalist. Um, and so my remit really is primarily thinking across brand, across lead generation across strategy, um, also across account development. I think with Assess First is actually a, a French business um, and a, a really quite well known in this space in France, but it's a little bit more immature in the UK market. It's been around for a couple of years, but I think it's fair to say the brand presence is not as strong in the UK. So most of what I'm doing is a combination of working on the awareness stage of the funnel in terms of very broad brand awareness but of course, um, really trying to be as revenue focused as possible and not just spending my time there. So working quite closely with the sales team, which is developing at the minute to generate leads um, and to generate the right kinds of leads as well. Very nice. Um, Alicia, uh, what does it differ from what uh, Jack said? So how's, how's your role? Okay, my role, I would say, um, of course, it implies strategizing. I would say that also my role implies a lot of um, personnel so of course like I manage a team and at the end of the day people is sometimes the most complicated part of a company so of course um, managing people plays a big big role in in my job and what I do but I would say that we're more focused on strategizing we're focused on business to business um, but of course we try and develop very niche parameters for diagnostics mm -hmm. so we have to try and convince Key opinion leaders and doctors that they should use this specific parameter for um, the diagnostics that they're doing for certain diseases. So, of course, for us, it's always strategizing about why they should use that. And of course, lots, lots involved in actually the development of the information for doctors and education, mm -hmm. I would say that we're very focused on. And um, of course, then, um, yeah, just developing and developing and improving the test work a lot with product management as well so um, we have to focus on making these products as well as possible and that meet all the necessities of the market at that point really and like jack you also came from the bright side to the dark side didn't you um so i did study marketing and sales management um so i actually have always done business development so much more focused on sales um and then i moved on to marketing so yeah Nice. <laughs> nice, Andrea. How about you? How does your role differ from what was said here? You didn't come to the bright side, to the dark side, did you? 
You know what? I don't really know why you call it the dark side to begin with, but uh, <laughs> fine. fine. I, I would call it the other way around, you know, but it's fine. <laughs> I can see your preference, my father, already. Um, so, no, I've always done marketing, always B2B, always startup scale up. So, I don't know. I, I guess I found my, my way, so to say, or the way found me super early on. Um, my role is very different because... First of all, I joined uh, Brighter just a month and a half ago, but also because uh, marketing is very new for the company. So I'm still in the process of actually setting everything up, right? So when you, when you, when you think MarTech, like everything needs to be synchronized, you know, in order to be able to run any campaigns, right? You need to, to have the right tech and you need to have it synchronized. So we're working on this now, but, um, you know, that usually takes a bit of time. Nevertheless, I, this, is, this, this was my starting point. Then also education. Uh, it's a new category, right? We do data anonymization for faces and licenses. So basically deep fakes, you know, to protect identities in public, which sounds pretty cool, but people don't know it exists, right? Yeah. You also do regulators and so on. So it's, it's a com relatively complex product with a cool mission, so to say, but uh, a lot of education work needs to be done, you know, before you even, you know, start um, um, doing lead gen campaigns and stuff like this. And branding, right? If there's no marketing, you can imagine that there's no really a branding. There's like, there's a logo there. There's kind of like what we do deck somewhere. So like putting everything in order takes time. This is where I'm at, but um, yeah, it's, it's very exciting. Would you, would you say that that's one of your biggest challenges in your role currently? Um, mm, content for me is the biggest challenge, right? Because mm -hmm. creating good content takes a lot of time. You also need it for branding, for everything. I think everything, for me at least, everything starts with content. Everything starts with story. So at the moment, content is my biggest, creating content is the biggest challenge. Um, all the rest, I think, with the right people, you can get done, you know? I mean, it's, it's, it's no rocket science, but yeah content Jack, is hard. what what do you say is content also uh one of your biggest challenges in your particular case uh it is a challenge um which is why i'm recruiting for that role actually <laughs> so all right if any one of you is listening to us and like to apply <laughs> not, yes i eat that as well <laughs> so please go ahead all right so that's not why here i'm go. here <laughs> so here we go we yeah. just changed from talking about your role <laughs> to a hiring part so yeah yeah it, it's Let's... a break for the interest for the hiring so andrea alicia and jack are hiring so continue <laughs> jack <laughs> Let's not turn this into a job sphere. Um, <laughs> but, um, no, it is a challenge. Uh, yeah, I think for everything that um, that Andrea's just said, really, you know, it takes it takes time. Um, and I, I I am on the bright side of marketing. Now. Like I love being creative, so I love coming, you know, with ideas and thinking about the comm strategy and genuine, especially in B two B. I think there's a uh, there can be a hesitancy sometimes to be super creative. Um, or certainly there has been um, in years gone by, um, but actually the, the B2B market, I think there's beginning to be more and more space for big ideas. So I've got lots of ideas, but it then just takes the time to execute. Can't just come up with ideas and then not do anything about it. Um, so that of course is a challenge. Um, if you're asking me, were you asking me what my biggest challenge is or was that, was it just on content? Sorry. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, no, I, so I think my biggest challenge actually is, um, is a, a little bit unique actually for me and my career so far. So um, my background also is in startups and scale ups. And usually there's lots of things you want to do, but maybe the budget is, might be a little bit more restrictive. With Assess First, it's quite a, an interesting situation. As I said earlier, they're actually quite a well established and well oiled machine uh for the french market i mean there's customers all over the world um like three and a half thousand of them but actually within the french market very well established but in the uk it is very much a startup and i think that my personal biggest challenge but also maybe the biggest challenge for the business is how do you create a level of autonomy and independence to enable growth into a new territory where the brand is not so well known whilst at the same time holding on to you know the things that make you who you are and i think actually from a startup that even if you're not internationalizing that's something that you know a lot of startups do as they scale and as they try and grow how do you go and find all these new communities these new advocates 
whilst also making the most of and looking after those people that have really got you to where you are today. And I think that challenge across languages, across cultures, doing it in a way that doesn't neglect all the great things we've already done in France, and I'm proud that we're French, it, that is a challenge in itself, which can be seen in lots of areas of the marketing mix. So that's the bit I need to navigate. Nice. Alicia, I see you nodding. Would you like to build on that? <laughs> I mean, um, I completely agree. At the end of the day, um, yeah, challenges come from lots of different points. And I think that I can agree that um, about like creativity in B2B business, um, they're always like very reluctant to, to go into like these create, let's say more crazy ideas. But at the end of the day, um, marketing is extremely important for, for business to business or business to client. Like, why would you like try to differentiate that? And I think that also, um, let's say in general structures when it's B2B, you are going to a type of persona that can be very reluctant to certain ways. Um, but I think that that is changing generationally. So that's kind of fun. Um, but at the end, yeah, with the content and the challenges and everything, I have like big issues because at the end of the day, I only work with scientists. And part of my job is um, trying to translate science into human language is one of my, let's say, I would say. <laughs> they are human scientists, though, right? They, they are, kind yeah. of, you know, sometimes I feel, I hope. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, sometimes having people realize that the message that they're trying to actually show to the world isn't being understood and that if you put it in a, if you actually express it in a different way people are going to understand it and feel it and create an emotion but the way that they're saying it right now no one understands and they're not actually you know playing with people let's say not playing but actually having like emotions towards it because they're not understanding they're talking in a, such a technical way that at the end of the day it's very hard for, to understand for the rest of people and especially when you're trying to sell science to businesses there's like a, a miscommunication there um because at the end of the day when we're going like in i don't know we're going internationally and we're trying to convince companies to sell our products in a certain way um the scientists are just putting up all the technical part and all that technical information and how they see it. And you can see their passion in their faces, but they're not actually getting the, the message to, to the person. So I would say that's a big challenge on my side. Yeah, I see. Yeah. And going from challenges, how do you, and we can continue with you, Alyssa, as we are on that note how do you try to overcome those those challenges you're on mute you're on mute yes i do think i've heard that by now uh, the last bit that, that part that you said completely cut off <laughs> if you uh, that. um so my question was so what what have you been doing how's your day to day let's say to overcome those challenges um i'm a very perfect people person so at the end of the day I try to bring, bring different people and um, to understand each other and listen to everybody's points of view I would say that doing and it's a huge huge effort to sit down with scientists and um, have them focus on the topics that are important to you because of course they're talking about their passions so they're going to go away that's like what's interesting to them so you let them talk you let them everything but then you have to stay take three steps back and go back and say okay but what is this for can you explain this these are my questions you know and I have to like develop the questions in a way that the scientists understand and also try to understand scientists heads and different people's heads which I think mm -hmm. is very important in marketing in general um and of course like for example if you're asking them a question and it's a yes no answer they're not going to develop on that that's a scientist brain you ask them a question and the answer is yes or no so you have to say yes but why and and how and who you know and just going again with these questions and trying to make them understand what you're not understanding in a certain way it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a hard process definitely. yeah i see yeah, yeah yeah absolutely i used to prospect technical personas so i do relate a bit to that um uh so yes i i i totally get you andrea how's usually your typical day look like like um, I'm too new to uh, have a typical day, to be honest. So um, it's uh, it's a bit hectic. I think 
every beginning is a bit like this. It takes time to uh, to start prioritizing properly. Um, but really, I mean, the what I'm trying to do now is really find a way to 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 tell our story in the right way um, based on the based on the persona. That's going to take some time, and it's it's the same like Alicia said. Um, I think it's, it's especially when you deal with uh, personas that you have nothing in common with, like I don't know lawyers or, but lawyers are amazing people. I'm just saying that <laughs> they're very different from previous personas I worked with, right? Um, or I don't know, like machine learning uh, engineers and so on. They're very different, so you need to tell stories also on, like based on on their personality. Then find the channels. I'm also like investigating to see where are these people where can i find them how do i reach them and ultimately i think marketing should spend more time with customers and prospects as well so i'm also trying to do this so convincing salespeople to let me stay <laughs> sit in their meetings see how how these people talk and afterwards emulate this sort of language this you know uh in um uh in the content we we build so yeah jack does it differ your your day-to-day -day, um from what Alicia and Andrea said, um, um, how does it differ? <laughs> it's, I don't know. I was I was hoping you just weren't going to come to me then. <laughs> All right, I, let me I, rephrase then. How is your day usually? Your TV? No, I'm still hoping that you're not going to come to me. Ah. <laughs> I think, um, and the reason that I'm hesitant really to, to answer is because um, I I actually wish that my you know my days and my time were more structured, I think. I can it's really, really hard. I my, my... <laughs> in a marketing position, it's really hard to like focus your day in a certain way and see, okay, because it's just this mess here, this mess there. So it's, yeah. yeah. I, no, was also, right. I was also dreading that question, to be honest, because I was like, oh, wow, well, I don't think I'm, I could say like, this is my structure because every day it's a different mess. Yeah, so, I can yeah. I can relate to I, that too here. <laughs> and I would, I would sort of agree, yeah, with everything being said so far, you know, again, sort of working alongside, um, you know, scientists, developers. And, and one of the things that I want to do is, again, not neglect that science, but bring that science out and bring it to the fore. But and I think particularly for marketers, particularly in B2B and particularly in technology companies. So usually in startups, SaaS, scale-ups, um, I think it's really important that your day is a bit of a mess because you have to, you, you have to strategically really, as you know, as is the, the call to arms for marketers, you have to try to get, you know, the seat at the table and be kind of connected to so many different stakeholders in the business and figure out like internally, what what is our message here what is our technology what is our story like what is our differentiation yep. and i think the simultaneously the only way that you can do that is by having really broad sporadic messy conversations with lots of people and sometimes you get to the end of a week and think i haven't done any work because i've just <laughs> been on calls or i've just been listening or i'm typing up documents and notes from this town hall uh, but i think that when you can get through that necessary evil of sporadic work, I think as long as you can then be disciplined or your team underneath you can be then disciplined to be able to turn that into meaningful output, I think that you reap the rewards. Um, so yeah, my day is, I feel like a little bit like Andrea, like I've only been working at Sesmos for a month because there's just, there's a lot of kind of, you know, plates spinning, but I, I think that that's a necessary evil of marketing. Um, that should, you know, bear fruit. I must say that that's... Sorry, sorry go sorry. on. I was just going to say that that sounds very comforting, I must say. <laughs> you know, because like, I feel like, oh, someone understands me. But I think what's, what's hard, though, is to, um, to uh, like draw a line. I think it's important not to work in a waterfall way, like plan the quarter and like every day, you know, just go towards it because you're going to miss a lot of opportunities. But it's a tricky, it's it's tricky to find the right balance and be like, okay, look, these are our OKRs or whatever you call it. These are our objectives. But then there's little opportunities, you know, coming here and there that you also have to take them on. And yeah, I, I never had a typical day, to be honest. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm looking forward to it, but if it happens, I'll let you know. There is no typical day. <laughs> I, yeah. I totally relate with you and I don't work in marketing, but I work in a startup. So every day is a new day with new challenges. And my, so I try sometimes to structure my day or my week and then 
nothing has to do with what I planned. So I I know exactly exactly what you guys mean. You mentioned something, Andrea. You mentioned all OKRs and KPIs in your roles. Usually, what are the typical um, yeah KPIs and OKRs? Um, it's uh, revenue, right? I mean, that's ultimately that's why you have marketing, uh, like marketing departments. It's not the MQLs or I don't know number of leads. So to say, I think it's all about revenue, right? And pipe generation. So my 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 objectives, the reason why I exist in Brighter is really is, is uh, revenue generation. So they look at the pipe I generate through the campaigns. Now, of course, I personally will also look at MQLs, you know, and SQLs just to track conversion and see if I can optimize what I'm doing. But ultimately is how much money do I bring and what's the ROI, right? It's not just how much money you bring, but really how much did you invest in order to get that revenue? So uh yeah my boss will definitely look at the revenue general <laughs> revenue <laughs> yeah that's it i'm not gonna ask alicia or jack if uh revenue is important because that would be a stupid question uh, <laughs> so my question is uh do you have besides revenue other okrs other kpis that you look at usually jack um, I must say that in my case, I think that um, I'm in a very similar situation as Andrea. I mean, my company is 30 years old, um, but they've never had a marketing department as a such. So this is something that I'm building up um, just at the moment. So of course, like my main focus is people and um, systems and structure. So I'm measuring myself right now in how well the structure that makes sense for our company is going and how it's being set up and if this is functioning and also i'm focusing a lot on keeping the people that work around me happy and that they feel accomplished with work, their work because i'm a big believer in teams and people and i think that um if people aren't happy and people aren't feeling accomplished with what they do we aren't going anywhere as a team or as a company. So I would say that that's definitely my focus at this point of time. And what I'm trying to measure in a very, let's say not a number, it's not a figure or anything, but it's, yeah, more of like a gut feeling of how it's going. Yeah. Even how about very... you, Jack? Yeah. Um, yeah, again, so don't disagree with anything really that's been said. And, and actually having come from sales, that the reason that I was really either moved or was moved from sales into marketing was essentially because my, my biggest complaint as a salesperson was like, I haven't got enough leads. Like if you give me more leads, I'll be able to close more business. Oh, marketing people hate to hear that. Yeah, and, and, they, <laughs> and essentially the business called me out and was like, well, you should go and generate your own leads. So off you go into marketing. So that was essentially, um, you know, and again, the flexibility that comes with the startup allowed me to do that. And, um, you know, it worked and I was a better marketer than I was a salesperson really um so for me like generating leads being tied to revenue is super important to to keep marketing as a function to the business honest and yeah. accountable at the same time they, they obviously they can be a race to the bottom because if if i were only focused on revenue or only focused on lead generation and that is the main thing I look at on my dashboard, but if I were only focused on that, then, you know, what happens in like three years? Like, do I walk away from assess first and go, oh great, like I generated 200 leads in that final quarter. Like ultimately who cares? Like that is, it doesn't, doesn't change the world. It doesn't really change the business. So whilst revenue is like super important and is the thing that keeps me accountable, I think for me, again, from a start, if I think about a startup mentality, trying to break into the UK, it's also a bit like flags in the sand. So can we demonstrate that we are engaged? So whether that's digital engagement across social, can we demonstrate that we're engaged with people that we're confident are our ICP, that we're confident are gonna be the sorts of business and be the sorts of thought leaders in that market, that are gonna be able to take the business forward. And I would, of course, I want to be able to walk away from Assess First whenever that is and say, you know, me and my team were able to contribute to the revenue and to the leads and, and all of the, that kind of tangible stuff. But I think also what would be more important to me is to be able to walk away and say, look at these businesses that we were having conversations with in 2022, like look at the, the kind of value of that in terms of changing the world and look at where those conversations went and look at the people and the businesses we were talking to in 2024. And for me, like, 
what levers do I have to pull to get to that point? Um, that for me is like the thing that I'm focused on always, but that's very difficult to communicate in a way that people just think you're not making it up, you know? So it, there's a balance. Um, yeah, there's a balance. I see Andrea smiling. Do you have anything to add there? <laughs> I don't know, like if I had a boss that would talk to me about what conversations I had, I'd be like, wow, that's that's amazing. That's never going to happen. I don't know. Ultimately, I don't I always thought it's a very clear mission. It's like close deals, bring the inbounds to, you know, grow the inbounds, just grow, constantly grow, you know, and uh, optimize the performance of your campaigns. And ultimately, if you are good at showing that, um, you know, you engage with the with, with your customers, the prospects and so on, that's going to show in the revenue. So ultimately, everything you mentioned is connected to the revenue. Like if you're good at all those things you said, you're going to see it in the revenue. So this is why I think it's actually a good a good indicator. But again, having just one, I think it's a bit uh, too little. I think it's reductive. Uh, but I've met many marketers that have as uh, their objective. They're like KPIs. It's purely MQL. And I think that's a mistake because you can fake it. I mean... You know that, right? Your marketers yeah. you can fake what an MQL is, change the definition, approve more, and so on. But ultimately, if nothing yeah. closes, you're going to get in big troubles with sales because you know you're going to need sales to be a successful marketer. So I think it's it's um, it's not a good way to to do it. I really think it's it's a number of opportunities and and uh, the revenues that marketers should look at. At least if I was a CEO, that's what I'd ask my marketers to look at. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And there is always this very known sales and marketing friction uh, that um, I also like. I mean, me, Andrea, just for context, I used to work together. I used to be in sales. Uh, she was in marketing. Um, and I always saw marketing as my best friend because it really helped me book more meetings. And Andrea knows that. I'm not just saying this for the camera. Every time she's like, I have these marketing stretches, like, oh my God, this will generate more calls for me, which will help my target. So it's, I think it's really important. Also what Jack mentioned as well, it's really important for the whole success of the business to market, marketing and sales really, really work together. Um, going um, to, uh, let's say the last part of our uh, chat, how, Alicia, how do you keep updated with the new uh, marketing trends or how to how do you get ideas what do you read what's what's the media that you consume uh, I would say that I consume every type of media possible I'm in the sense of like I get ideas from of course reading articles maybe in Harvard Business Review and the you know like marketing specific stuff I even get ideas from a child posting something on TikTok so actually saying where my idea comes from is very very broad you know because of course you can read a super professional article and they're commenting on this and the research that they've done um but then you have a 15 year old posting some weird idea that they've had um on some social media and you also get a light of like oh wow wait that could actually work you know so saying hey i get my information from here is i wouldn't say answerable um but i think that as a marketer, you have to keep your eyes and your ears open all the time from everywhere and all the information that's coming in, you know? So yeah, it's very hard to focus where it's coming from. Yeah, same in sales. Yeah, absolutely. Jack, what would you say here? Is there anything that you usually read that's also here and there? How, how do you usually consume knowledge, let's say? Yeah, so there's, there's obviously a lot of information everywhere, um, which I personally find quite... It can be daunting uh, to know where to go and and actually then why are you even bothering because it's just like noise. So for me, um, I just I actually use the the CIM so the the Chartered Institute of Marketing here in the UK. So that for me was um, as well as just making the move from sales into marketing. I went in a, in, a, in at a tactical level really as a marketer, but the CIM enabled me to see things at a strategic level and actually whether you're talking about generating leads, generating revenue, the strategies that you learn in some of the oldest frameworks from the CIM, if you go back to Ansoff in the 60s, you know, they still hold up. They still hold up even in digital marketing and social media. So for me, I go back to the, to the CIM website. There's a resources section on there. There's regular podcasts, there's regular blogs, and basically just use that as my hub and from there kind of work out. Um, I try not to bury myself in too much 
but that kind of gives me enough just to to kind of yeah trip my brain into action i suppose and the, the last thing i just i would say is although i was saying about speaking to people within the business and you're kind of in that web it's like speaking to customers i, I think it was andrea mentioned it earlier you know that marketers are they should be the champion of the customer um possibly in a way that may only be matched by potentially ux but even at ux they're thinking about a user rather than a customer and so spending time and learning from customers learning about the conversations they're having and what they're reading that is if you combine that then with the things that you're learning from marketing resources that's usually for me what gives me the ideas to then move forward so yeah what would you say andrea would um yeah have a business review i think i I, I read it pretty frequently, not in the last month and a half, but before that. Uh, and <laughs> I, I used to use LinkedIn a lot. There's, there were, uh, I follow quite a few people, like, um, especially demand gen, in demand gen that uh, are sharing, you know, like thought leaders or whatever that I can learn from. <clears throat> but recently, yeah, LinkedIn became a bit of, I don't know, like, I, I don't like it that much anymore, at least for like getting good content. I think it's became more like a, Laugh. very noisy yeah 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 um but now i think the most important thing for me is really my peers um like see what they're trying out like what tools they're using you know i uh, i reach out to them often and they the network i have as well and i think that's very useful um especially in b2b i mean i think we are very creative in b2b at least i had the chance to actually work with super creative people i just think that strategy sometimes is more not sometimes strategy is more important in b2b than creativity but this doesn't mean there's no creativity and i think i've i was fortunate enough to see many so yeah my peers linkedin harvard business review american marketing association sometimes but um yeah <clears throat> Sounds good. Good. As we are wrapping up, I have a final uh, question for all of you. So basically, um, I was collecting prospecting emails for marketing people, and I will show you one. Obviously, I took away the company and the name of the person. So I'll just show the email. And Alicia and Jack, you're really in sales as well. So I'd love to hear your your thoughts uh, on this email. So if you would receive this email, what would be your um, thoughts on it? So who wants to go first? Jack, you used to work in sales, you went to marketing. What's, what's, what's your opinion about this um, email to a marketing person? I need some time to read it. Hang on very quickly. Uh, da, da, da. So <clears throat> I think to a large extent, the, the game of cold marketing and cold sales is largely dead anyway. Yeah. Like, so I'm already looking at this from a place of, I, I'm sure everybody else is the same on this call, that the amount of emails or LinkedIn DMs that I get today are unmanageable to the point where if I don't know them, I'm done. I, 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 I will try where possible if somebody gives me a good intro to respond to them. So immediately, uh, this is like four paragraphs. Uh, I was reading online. It's not very specific. It sounds generic. It looks like it's just gone through a HubSpot automation. I'm not interested. Um, the other thing as well, just like we were saying, like as, like as marketers, you should be the champion of the customer. And as sales, really, you should be the like the inquisitor of the customer. So like this sentence for me, like with a surge of online customers due to the digitalized era we live in, which sounds like just the biggest load of BS in the world anyway, I imagine that one of your priorities would be able to generate more and more traffic. If somebody tells me what they imagine my priorities are, like I wanna slap them in the face and say, <laughs> cause they don't know and they shouldn't assume and they shouldn't imagine. They just need to ask the question Okay. Ask, ask the question and then get some kind of engagement. Um, but yeah, that's. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Andrea, what's what's your take? Well, I'm not sure if I'd slap the guy. I will consider slapping the guy who says this. I think it's it's a very bad. Don't point. advocate. I don't advocate. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, it's not the best, but I've seen so much. I don't know. I've seen worse stuff. 
I'm not sure about you, Jack, and, but this is, the, John is trying. I'm not sure if I would take the call unless he would attach maybe a, a piece of relevant, like a one pager to know exactly what they do. But in general, I'm not taking any calls from an email unless they send me like a PDF or a brochure that kind of shows me what they do. Otherwise, I'm not wasting my time. So uh, I really care about context. Interesting. So interesting. That, that's very interesting. Would you read the PDF if someone sent you? If it's one, one page, pager, one pager. Would, yeah, one oh, pager, yeah. I would. Uh, interesting, interesting. At least I would skim through, right? I would skim yeah. through. I'm like, yeah. see if I something that I might need. If it's not, obviously, no, no interest. But yeah, if it's one page, sure. Absolutely nice. How about you, Alicia? I mean, I must say that this is the type of email which I immediately delete. I probably wouldn't even. Yeah, probably if I see just in the email that I was reading online that your company, I wouldn't even open the email for most probably just because of the amount of work that we have at the moment. It's something that I can't invest time on. Mm -hmm. And also, um, you can make emails interesting and you can catch you can catch attention on the email and you can tell me what you do. And if you were telling me directly on the email, hey, we can offer you this X, Y, Z, and this is how we're going to help you then I might be able to invest the time. Um, but if I have to actually read this email, it's four paragraphs. You're not saying anything. I feel that you're not giving anything of interest and yeah, you're not giving any value on the actual email. Then I would actually have to go to the email, see if you're actually at attaching something. Yeah, I wouldn't have the time for that, unfortunately. I suppose that that would be my thing. Can I ask you something? Like, yeah. if do you care if a vendor says we work with I don't know Abracadabra and Marina and whatever? Like, does this help you? Because honestly, I don't care that Me much. About does it? I love, I, I love that point, Andrea. That you just I made. I don't because I work in um, diagnostics in general. And maybe you can say, oh, I don't like Rosh. That's nothing. That's nothing. Yeah, right. Rosh is big. You're giving giving. So, Does it matter to you? Because that I see in every prospecting email, like we work with X, Y, L, I. I'm like, yeah. I feel that some people, that some might, people might see, oh, see wow, I want to reach that. that. Really? You know, okay. You know, Maybe that helps Maybe someone. That helps someone. Maybe. Each person is different. There is there is there is no right or wrong, right? So this is just your opinion on. Uh, from in my very personal opinion, I also tell my BVs to not name drop. I don't think that's relevant. But you know, each person reacts differently. How about you, Jack? So both with this email, but then so there's a bit of an echo. Yeah. Um, both with this email, but also this applies to like social selling. So social selling for me is something I'm super passionate about. Like I've you are. I love your posts. I hope you don't consider me a stalker because I'm always liking them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm super passionate about it, and I've consulted. You know, I'm not. I'm not crazy on LinkedIn like at all, and I haven't got the biggest following. In fact, I actually, I also agree like LinkedIn's become very noisy. So I actually call, I actually delete followers on a quarterly basis or delete connections. Oh, I have to so, be careful. So that, no, 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 no. But just if, just to improve my own experience with LinkedIn, and people forget to do this. If people hate LinkedIn, like you, you can, I mean, LinkedIn, it doesn't always help itself. But you can curate it a bit. But what I was coming to was that, yeah, whether it's LinkedIn DMs or email, if you're social selling, the key word there is social. Like an email or a LinkedIn DM is the equivalent of being at a networking event with somebody in a bar or wherever you might be in like a meeting co-working space. And can you imagine waiting for a glass of Prosecco to come over at a networking event and somebody coming over and saying, hi, John, how are you? Um, yeah, so we work with this company and this company and blah, blah, blah. And, oh, and, and this is what I do. And I can imagine one of you, like you- Well, would... some people doing that on conferences. And <laughs> I'm like, this is so weird. But like, like, why are you doing do. that? And there's the social part. You're missing the social you miss skill. You're missing the social part. And if the, the people that can find a way, I mean, you'll never be able to recreate that physical connection engagement, but people still buy from people. And in my experience, the salespeople, and actually I was quite good at this part of the sales pipeline. I was not so good at closing. I was much better at opening. The people that can find ways to open up that social element, like without pitching and four paragraphs, like how would you speak to somebody at a bar if you've never met them? How would you speak to somebody at the street? It's like, hey, have you got five minutes? I just wanna ask you a quick question. Or do you mind if we just go and sit down over there? I just, I've, I've met this person and said, I should really talk to you. Or 
like instead of saying I work with this company, this company is like what one thing we used to do all the time in sales would be, hey, I'm visiting this studio because I worked in VFX. Hey, I'm I'm at this studio. I can see they're two streets away. Do you mind if I pop in for a coffee? And like, if you can find that social element in, and if you read an email and it just doesn't sound like you could say that at a bar to somebody, you probably shouldn't be saying it. That's why GIFs and videos work really well in email. Or, or I mean, yeah, I think the wave has probably faded, but that's why they work so effectively because they reintroduce that social element, even in really serious B2B environments. So yeah, that, that would be my like, thing i agree yeah no totally i i i train my sales reps and i'm yeah i'm all about like linkedin video uh social and less robotic kind of conversation and and we are jargon right voice notes as well love them gold honestly like hardly anybody uses them so those that's insane Uh, that's insane like voice messages on linkedin are so powerful it's crazy yeah. yeah, so people who are listening to us, please start using voice notes on LinkedIn. But, but you know, as, as all of our guests said, be human. Don't just say, hi, hi, Andrea, I'm reaching out to you because I work with blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. So, you, you uh, can have that's... so much fun with a 30-second voice note. Like <laughs> Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Um, great. Thank you so much, all of you, for uh, this chat with me. It was very insightful for me and for sure for everyone who are listening to us. Um, for those who are listening, um, we have uh, more episodes coming up as well. And uh, yeah, I hope this uh, helped uh, everyone in the community to better understand uh, the marketing department. So thank you so much, all of you. And I'll speak thank to you. you soon. Speak to you soon. Bye, have guys. a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.